So it is the middle of the night. I think it's like like two or three. I damaged my shoulder this weekend, so I've been off work for Monday and Tuesday, and it's now the morning Wednesday, and my shoulder seems a bit better, but I have managed to backwards my sleeping schedule. Yay! But in the meantime, I have started Haunted by James Herbert, and I am indeed haunted. I haven't got too far into it yet, but I'll be honest, there was one bit at the very beginning that I'm going to blame for my sleeping schedule at the minute. I, I started reading it as I was going to sleep and I thought, I was really tired, but I was like, I'll just, I'll get it started and then I'll probably fall asleep with the book on my face as I normally do. But something so ridiculous happened that I could not uh, actually, I couldn't actually believe it. And it's so, it's so small and, and stupid. But Ash, our uh, protagonist, David Ash, uh, is going to investigate a haunted house. Before he gets picked up from the train station, he goes into a pub and he orders a vodka, straight up. He's, he's not even pretending he doesn't have a problem. And uh, he also orders a pint. And he proceeds to pay with two pound coins for a vodka and a pint. I, I mean, I know inflation, but like, what? And that's not even, that part like killed me, but the next part brought me back to life. He then asks if there's a phone he could use and he picks up his drinks and the change. So it wasn't even two pound. It was less than two pound for a vodka and a pint. I don't know if I'm just, I'm too used to 2022 Dublin where you wouldn't get anything for less than a tenner, but like, yes, two pound. Otherwise I'm liking it. There's some extramarital affairs going on. There's a psychic. Uh, Ash works for the psychical research facility in England, whatever. He's sort of having a thing with the head woman there. Uh, he seems to... He's, he doesn't, he's skeptical. He tries to disprove things which you need in those situations. But the psychic is convinced that he has uh, some psychic abilities himself and he's repressing them and that's why he's so conflicted and why he drinks so much. Uh, but hey, if everything costs less than two pound, I'd be drinking a lot more too, so, you know, fair. I obviously can't sleep. My shoulder is a little bit better, uh, but so I have to go to work in the morning, but I am just finished a bite of Assassin's Creed and I'm gonna have some tea and a snack and then I'm gonna do some more reading. This one is nice and slim. I'm like almost halfway through it, so I'll probably get this done in the next couple of days. That third one though, I don't know, that's, that could take a while. So, time has passed. I have read a bit more of the book. I'm over halfway through it, I think. I, I really like his writing. Uh, a lot of this book, uh, I'm currently writing a, a gothic novel myself about a kind of haunted house ghost stuff so a lot of this is very relevant to what I'm do, trying to do myself so I'm, I'm taking a lot of mental notes on how he's setting things up, how he's doing things and I really do like his writing. It is very good. His, his setup of characters is very good. I'm just realizing that the only other book I've read of his is was The Dark and I think I mentioned this in the review I did of that was that The Dark felt a lot more like uh, a lot more chaotic. It was kind of like um, the way Stephen King talks about his plots a lot where he just have a core idea or a core set of people and then you just run with it and see where it goes. It didn't feel like the dark had any um, a set outline that he had but it, it definitely feels like there is in this one. So Ash is 
currently in this house in the middle of nowhere and his superior at the Psychical Institute of Research is getting a little worried because uh, her, her friend, the psychic, is very worried. She says that he's in danger. They can't get in contact with him uh, because this house is in the middle of nowhere. He hasn't contacted them. I'm starting to get a little bit suspicious of the people in the house. I just wanted to see how many pages were in the book and I accidentally saw a page that I think may have like ruined a twist for me but when I try and think of it, I, it doesn't really make sense but we'll see, we'll see how that goes, how that plays out. I'll only get this one finished tonight or tomorrow. The one says Ghosts of Sleeth which is the second book, it's very good so I'm eager to move on to that as well uh, but I'll get this done first. really just turning into a completely nocturnal vlog. Uh, yeah, it wasn't on purpose, but it, it's happening. I finished Haunted. It was an unexpected ending. I, I mentioned before that I accidentally flipped to one of the back pages and I did see something that was sort of a spoiler. That turned out to be the spoiler, but not in the way that I expected. I did have sort of a major kind of plot hole, in my opinion. I don't entirely know how some things happened after finding out the, the ending to this, but it was definitely unexpected. A good book, I liked it. If anyone who has read it or has read it a few times would like to uh, explain to me, let's just say, how did Ash actually get to the house? You know what I mean? How did he actually get there? That's, that's, that's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. So now I am on to, oh, I took the wrong one. This is the third one, no. I, I have started reading the, the second one, which is called The Ghosts of Sleeth, and it's a few years after the events of Haunted, and Ash is again uh, going to this small town that seems to be haunted by multiple things, or multiple strange things are happening. I've only read the first one or two chapters, I think, so um, I'm just getting into it. Uh, Kate is back, the head of the Psychical Research Institute. Um, so, yeah. The one thing about this was that... but uh, One thing that sort of bothered me about Ash was that he's apparently this sceptic, but only for very specific things. Like, he seems to fully believe in... Um, like telekinesis and reading people's minds and uh, psychics and stuff but he just doesn't believe in ghosts no matter what he sees because that's like something from his past that he's trying to like repress even though he definitely sees things and knows that people can do things that are sort of sort of otherworldly but I guess I guess I'm kind of the same way. I don't believe in ghosts, but I I think we, we definitely don't know how our minds work and we can definitely create our own realities, at least. Um, so, you know. Also, the age is a little ambiguous. I'm not entirely sure how old he is, but I think he's like late 30s, maybe early 40s or something, which makes Haunted a little bit weird for me because there's a bit of a romancy thing uh, that went on with uh, one of the, the people who lives in the house that he goes to investigate. Her name's Christina and I wasn't sure entirely throughout the book. I was like, is she a teenager? Has she, did she like just turned 19 or 20 or something? And she, along with her brothers, definitely acts like a child. She acts very childishly, pulling pranks and stuff and giggling all the time. The whole way through the book, 
and yet it, there's still this weird rom romance thing with this old man. Uh, old compared to her is what I mean. So I thought that was a bit weird because when that kind of cropped up I was like, oh, I'd, I'd been looking at her like she was a kid the whole time. Just strange. The second book, uh, He's going on an assignment to a town to figure out what is going on with these people. So, so far I'm liking it. I wonder, I feel like again it's, it's gonna be quite plotted. So far I'm liking it. It is uh, definitely a different vibe to the Herbert that I've read before. But I should probably sleep. But I'm not known for making the best decisions, so. Do you like the movie Aliens? Because I do. I liked it so much. I just had to copy her hair. Remember what the last thing I said about this was? I did finish this, uh, Ghost of Sleeth, and I have just read the first couple of chapters of Ash. And I'm beginning to think that they're not in any way connected, really. If you know what I mean? I might be wrong, I might be wrong, but the things that were brought up in the very beginning opening chapters of Haunted, the first book, they didn't appear anywhere in this one, like I thought they would. Uh, there's an Irish character in this one, and he is just a straight up leprechaun. He's a little fiddle dee dee, hoity toity, uh, little Irish guy in a green tweed suit. Because of course he is. I mean, the character's fine. He's a uh, he's weirdly mysterious and uh, a bit ominous, perhaps. But again, he he wasn't really his character wasn't really resolved. I feel like there was a lot more there that wasn't um, delved into. Uh, in this one, David Ash really falls for a woman. Um, he seems to do that quite often, to be honest. And despite literally reading each other's minds and seeing into each other's brains, he's still not convinced that he's a psychic. Uh, so, come on David, wake up. And I did like Ghosts of Sleep. It's sort of like the first one was just a small people, like one small group of people in a house. A house called Edbrook because they can't just say what happened at Edbrook. They always have to say what happened at a house called Edbrook. Uh, and this one is a whole town of people, a whole community of people going back into their history and stuff. I liked the, you know, repressed memories coming back, the sins of the fathers kind of stuff coming back, and the real, there's some real brutal, horrible sins happening in this real bad shit. Uh, it's... I did like it, but again, it didn't, it didn't end quite the way that I thought it was going to. I did kind of like the little the bit at the end that I was like, oh, oh, they're doing that. They're going full whack on that. One thing I, I have noticed about his writing from reading this that sort of bothers me, but in a, in a very sort of petty way, is that he always uh, ends a chapter right in the middle of like a, a climactic moment. And then the next chapter will begin after everything's settled down and characters are just reflecting on what's happening. So it's just like, I wish you would stay there for just a little bit longer in those moments. But in saying that, that's just a very small thing. Again, I was confused. I've only been able to figure out from starting this how old he was and when these books were supposed to be set. So this one came out in 97, I think. And this one came out in 2012. In this one, he's 38. If I was to imagine that Haunted uh, actually took place in the year that it came out, which I think was 1989, then David Ash would have been 15 years old. So I don't think that was accurate. Uh, 
So I'm not entirely sure when the first two were set. I think this one, it definitely dates this one because, you know, they have mobile phones and stuff like that. Um, so I think this one was very, very much around 2012. Whereas these ones could kind of be 70s, 80s, I'm not entirely sure. that. Also, yesterday, uh, the Queen of England died. <laughs> And uh, I was going to bed and I opened the book to read it and that was on the first page. And the second page is Diana dying. I thought I was being trolled in real life. I don't... I don't know how that's connected but I'm sure I'll find out. I'm gonna call it now. I'd say it could have been this long. I'd say it's 700 pages, I think, in 400. That's what I'm gonna say. So we'll see if I feel the same by the end of it. <gasps> Is yet again night time uh, the following day I read a little bit last night didn't really feel like reading too much this evening James Herbert though I have proved myself right in that uh, directly after I filmed the clip last night it, I just they were like I think it was like 50 pages possibly at least 30 of uh, just this car ride for some reason He's going to this castle, everyone else gets off the plane and they get onto a helicopter that can get them to this castle in 10 minutes. Of course, there's just one person too many, so he has to get driven there. Uh, I don't even think the drive took that long, but he, he stretched that out for a good 30 or 40 pages that were just completely unnecessary. I mean, it, it's your fictional world, bro. You can just put an extra seat on the helicopter. You know, that like, it just wasn't necessary. We're almost, like, we're like 150 pages in and he hasn't even got in the front door of the place yet. Like, is is taking up a lot of my time? Taking up a lot of my time? I go, I'm actually a little bit tired though, so I'm gonna go to bed. And uh, I'll be reading while I'm falling asleep. And hopefully I can finish this in the next couple of days. Hopefully something happens. That's mildly interesting. Hopefully. Okay, before I start, I just want to show off my my new bed sheets. I've had them for a couple weeks now. The moons glow in the dark. Yes, I am 29 years old. What does that have to do with anything? But I like them quite a lot. If I look tired, it's because it's 3 a.m. Uh, this really has been a completely nocturnal vlog. Which was not intentional, but apt for this book. This I'm also recovering from a tennis ball sized ankle and a very badly <laughs> scraped up knee. Don't wear platforms and drink. Girls and guys, don't do it. This has been a very long vlog. It's been taken it's taken weeks for me to finish this. I am a little angry because it doesn't finish well. This one is possibly or definitely in my top five worst books I've ever read. 100%. So I, ha I have a lot of notes here written here. This monstrosity and whether you believe it or not 
it takes up less actual time than this one. This, as you can see, three nights. This, just over 24 hours. Seven hundred pages. I. Anyway, it also has a f like a fraction of the actual story or plot that these do. Like it's just so frustrating. I'm just gonna actually read my notes here. So, Ash somehow regresses even further into his skeptical self, despite what happened in book one and two. Uh, sister is never mentioned again. Uh, weird racist undertones. Yep. Reams of boring and completely unnecessary information, repetition, royal family bullshit. I, I'm Irish. I, I don't care. The Queen just died. I don't care. But, obviously, there is a character in this book called Gloria who is an absolute Margaret Thatcher stan for some reason. And it is just a lot of really liking the royal family. Even the... The pedos and the racists for some reason. No resolution to anything. Seemed like one big darling. You'll hear a lot in writing kill your darlings and it it doesn't refer to characters. It means the little sections of books that you think are great but they don't actually serve the story. It seems like the entire thing was one of those and he should not have published it. Um, and it should have stayed in a drawer somewhere. And honestly it did ruin the character of David Ash for me because in these two books he's he's interesting, he's a bit complicated, there's there's conflict within him. In this one he's just he's annoying, he's boring, he's borderline racist, weird misogynistic undertones, and he's just like a petulant child. And I do honestly believe that this is what happens when ego wins over the editor. Like when a writer, they know that they can sell anything, whether it's them or th like the publisher, the editor, whatever, they know they can sell anything. So nobody is like pushing them as much as they would have done years ago to like cut things out. And yeah, I, th I honestly think this could have been three, 300 max, 300 pages. That's how I felt about the book, but the actual, we did a short like recap of the book. Um, there's a, there's a, uh, I want to say short meeting, there's a meeting at the beginning, but it does cover several chapters, and I don't know why, it could have been one chapter, honestly, but David Ash is, because of his reputation or whatever, is being asked to go to this big castle in Scotland, the secret castle, called Comrick, and he's being asked to investigate these strange happenings that have been going on, and very violent happenings and they have to sign loads of NDAs and contracts and stuff because it is run by a very secretive organization uh, we later find out they're called the inner court it's very much like you know the stonemasons or Illuminati or whatever um, they are sort of known across the world by all the ultra rich people and they use this place as a health retreat or pretty much to hide away uh, very rich people who don't want to be put in jail for the bad things they've done. But also, weirdly, people who are not very rich and who are put there by rich people because I don't know why. There are like literal Nazis and warlords sitting beside like a woman who was married to a rock star and they both accidentally let their child die and he didn't want to deal with her anymore so he basically put her in a prison and pays like a billion a year to keep her there. It's all very strange. The book actually starts when he gets on a plane, I think it's from London to Scotland, uh, to go to this place and he meets the, the love interest of the book who's called Delphine. She is a psychologist at this uh, castle and she is originally from Brazil I think she might have been born there but she's lived in England her whole life so it is weird that Ash is he falls in love with her instantly he's very attracted to her but he says that it's weird 
that she orders tea on the plane instead of something exotic like what you, like preka laced coffee like what were you expecting she's english she's living in england all her life like what do you expect her to weird anyway so of course the plane ride goes on for chapters upon chapters upon chapters for no reason there's a sm there's an incident where the plane nearly uh crashes uh which is vague very vaguely interesting but not really uh once they land the plane of course uh there is a helicopter to take them to the to the castle however there's just oh there's one seat missing oh no so instead of getting like a, a 20 minute helicopter ride ash has to get in a car by himself and the driver and be driven to the castle which takes another like 10 chapters or something i i i was starting to lose my mind on this car ride because it's so boring it tells you very little about anything there's no point to it he should have just been on the helicopter and gotten to the castle done he's there it didn't need to be done like that at all inner court is supposed to be this all-knowing really influential thing that can like disrupt governments and all this bullcrap and Kate finds this out and tells Ash like hey you need to be careful because this inner court's really powerful immediately as soon as he gets there and he meets the guy this big scary guy who runs the place he goes hey I know about the inner court and it's just why why would you do that then and that also ruins the character of this guy that uh runs the place because initially it was like oh he's he's got some power he's got some something but then he just becomes this little like petty guy who gets like really flustered whenever ash deliberately shows up late to meetings and stuff it's like he's throwing a toddler tantrum it completely takes the power away from him there's no secrecy whatsoever also they seem to really want they really big up that like oh we can't tell you anything we don't want you to know anything to ash and yet there's absolutely no effort in any way to hide anything to hide who any of these people are he's just told oh this guy did this this guy did this and it's just it doesn't make any sense he keeps setting things up and then completely obliterating them by himself i don't know why you would do that and when he does finally get to the castle we are kind of introduced to an array of random people i'm guessing some of them are like historical figures that were are supposed to have died but they're in this place i don't know any of these english history people i don't really care um some of them are just random people who didn't have any other choice but to be there and then there's horrible characters like this priest who is in there because of course he did what priests do but there's no resolution to this in the end he just keeps mentioning like oh look at these terrible people like the priest is just used in the end as this horrible like visual in one of the scenes but there's there's no resolution to anything also a subplot of this assassin who's been working for the inner court but he now has Parkinson's that is coming on very quickly and he knows they're gonna get rid of him soon so he has decided to try to take down the inner court by like blowing up the castle and because of this it, the whole thing just feels very like ex machina everything just the whole end of the book just culminates in this like just sheer luck basically I have written down here um, a steady flow of gluttonous info and a few action scenes but you're never given a reason to care and yeah like I don't care I mean except for the couple of people who are out there by choice uh, I do not care about any of these people they are all like the worst people ever so I don't care that stuff's happening to them Ash is showing himself as this just incompetent skeptical weirdo why are you so skeptical out of everything that happened in the other books you cannot 
still be this skeptical. It's you're you're just being irritating now at this point. Nurse called Krantz and even references um, Nurse Ratchet at one point from one one floor of the cuckoo's nest. Um, but she's just immediately introduced as this uh, crazy jealous lesbian who had some sort of a, a one night fling with Delphine at one point and now she uh, is convinced that they're soulmates and she hates Ash. Um, that's all her character really is. There's no, there's no point to her. There's no, she doesn't serve the plot in any way. Uh, he does get to punch her in the face. Good for him. Fien is this uh, very intelligent and beautiful woman who uh, is a psychologist there, but he keeps making all these excuses for her. Like, he doesn't like the fact that all these people are being held in this place. They're prisoners. They can never leave this place because the inner court doesn't want anyone to ever know that it exists. They're all being uh, sedated and drugged at all times. They're also being experimented on with all these new drugs, which is one of the most repetitive things about the book is he just keeps throwing out all these brand names of drugs and explaining what they do and how they're used and how they came to be. And I don't, I don't give a flip about this fucking heart medication that does something like I, I don't care but obviously Delphine is aware of this but he keeps making excuses like oh she she couldn't possibly know that this person did this and she knows she's been working there for years her father worked there before her she knows exactly what it is like stop trying to like she could have been a, a great complicated and conflicting character but you just wanted to put her on this pedestal not to mention there's a, a later um part I genuinely couldn't believe this I've re I was reading it at work and there's a part where there's like a horrible smell or something and he gives her um a scarf to put around her face and he looks at her and he thinks oh with her dark eyes and dark hair she looks like a beautiful terrorist what 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 a wh why would you include that what? That was such a bizarre sentence to read. Bizarre, like, what? Oh yeah, there's also um, one of the big things, well a couple of the big things are there's um, a secret Hitler baby that uh, showed up there in the 40s or whatever. Um, she was born uh, with Down syndrome and a really big head. I don't, I don't know. And she is the one sort of attracting or controlling these dark spirits that are coming to this place and uh, causing all these ghostly happenings. Uh, there's also a guy with translucent skin, like his see-through skin, um, who was actually Princess Diana's baby. Again, all these royal family bullshit things. And then a oh, Hitler baby, I don't know. I don't know. Which, by the way, she's... This Hitler baby person is attracting all these things and controlling all these things. She's... You see, like, her in, like, two scenes. And uh, she dies very quickly. And it's just... It was just, like, the shock value of, like, mentioning Hitler and just... Real lazy. Real, real bad. And there's also, right before he meets this... Uh, Hitler person. There's, he can sense that uh, all of this bad stuff is coming up from the basement of this castle. So he manages to get in there even though they're trying to keep him out of there and it's basically where they keep all of the mentally ill people who are basically roaming around like zombies and as soon as he gets down there they all start attacking him like zombies and at one point, and this was such a bizarre thing to add in there, at one point he manages to get away from them because they are distracted that one of them, one of the female mentally ill patients who is 50 but she still has the, 
I think the phrase he used was plump puppy breasts of a 20 year old awesome gets her uh, hospital gown tore off and then they all immediately think oh they're boobs they're distracted and they um, all go to assault her and he can escape and he he thinks oh I can't feel bad about that for about four seconds and then he's never he, he never thinks about her again he was just totally fine with that happening like in these two books he is set up as like this you know hero of damsels in distress and he literally uses a catatonic woman to allow her to get attacked like that and just never thinks of it again never thinks never okay okay mm -hmm. so in short um not believable nonsensical too many characters and threads that lead absolutely nowhere. This serendipitous ending where the place blows up and then all of the Met Police, the English police, are there to like tick down the inner court. Like that's not how these things work. There isn't just one central place, there isn't one central person. Like that's it's like the the many headed serpent or whatever, like you can't just it just doesn't make any sense for this thing to have existed for what they're saying is like hundreds of years and you can just blow up one building and then it's done it just um doesn't make sense i've mentioned a lot of things but it's i haven't mentioned even half of the things and to be honest it was the large chunks of him just explaining like what cremation is or how a mag light works or just huge lists of all this technical equipment that he brought with him that he never actually gets to use or do anything with. Also, the entire book, I didn't even mention this, the entire book starts because they find a guy in one of the like hospital rooms in this castle and he is like crucified against the wall without nails. That's where this whole thing started from and that's why he gets called in because this poor guy was like up there nailed to the wall bleeding to death with no nails he's n like never spoken of again i don't know who did that i don't know why that happened like there's there's hints at why it happened but it's just like completely glossed over and for a book that has like a huge historical castle that could have all these things and it could have been so interesting and there could have been so many different characters it just seems like a really indulgent book for him and a way for him to he also like at the end of the book he goes through all these little chapter or little yeah chapters where he he gets to like kill off these horrible characters like Gaddafi and stuff like that just because I think he wanted, it was just a little fantasy for him, he wanted to have them die in a horrible way. But it does, it's not, it's not a good book, it's not a good, it's not well written at all. When you think of this, this, like I could not believe it. When he went to bed for the first time and it was over like 500 pages into the book and he hadn't slept yet or anything, it's just insane. So I just... I'm so glad this is over. Don't read it. Don't read it. It will it will ruin the first two. Read these two. These two are fine. Don't read this book. You don't need it. It's a complete waste of time. I will give James Herbert another try, but I think I'm gonna stick with his older books because no. So thank you for sticking with me for this nighttime vlog of James Herbert. I shall be back very soon with another video. Hope you're enjoying the spooky season. Thank you so much for watching and clicking and commenting and subscribing. I'll see you very soon in the next video.